And now we go to the third presentation about a very interesting uh, uh, Indian architect who actually worked with Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, Nari Gandhi. Uh, I don't have a very uh, large uh, material about him, but as a, an introduction to his work, is probably uh, uh, okay. He was a, a unique architect, very um, um, unconventional, and I think he learned from Wright uh, what Wright was so uh, fond of, his phrase, truth against the world. Now, I'm not so sure Wright always served truth. In fact, he was a man of many hats, as, uh, as in fact the title of a book on him is, a man of many hats. He was able to negotiate with reality in very skillful ways. And I'm sure often he uh, went a little bit uh, aside from what he called so emphatically truth. Anyway, this was the architect, the Indian architect, who had a chance to work for, uh, for, uh, for White, uh, being very young because he was born in 1934. And I think, uh, um, I forgot exactly when, uh, when uh, uh, Wright died. I think 1955, Le Corbusier died in 1965, uh, swimming towards the sun, uh, in, in the Mediterranean Sea. So this is uh, Mr. Gandhi, uh, an interesting architect, and you will see some buildings by him. So he was a, an Indian architect known for his highly innovative works in organic architecture. Uh, but his organic architecture is a, li a little bit different from uh, the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright. Land is the purest form of nature, and buildings grow towards the light like a plant. Uh, wishful thinking. This is the kind of thought process that inspired Nari Gandhi to give us great buildings with sensitivity to nature, organic, and yet resembling a strong geometry. Nari Gandhi's work was deeply inspired by the ideologies of Frank Lloyd Wright. His thoughts, ideas, lifestyle, and the belief system were so straightforward and path-breaking that he is often compared to Howard Rourke, uh, the, lead, the lead character in the famous novel, The Fountainhead. Now, this novel, uh, written by Anne, 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 Anne Rain, uh, Rain, 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 I forgot exactly her last name. This, this novel is not so noble uh, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as some people think. In my opinion, uh, is, uh, could be a little bit misleading, but its virtue, the virtue of this book is that shows that the architect is willing even to sacrifice his well-being for the well-being of what he believes in, meaning his work. So it shows the architect as a kind of a revolutionary who stands for his truth, for, uh, for what he believes in and doesn't want to make compromises. Um, Nari was full of modesty and would treat his workers very well. He was fond of the unconventional styles of architecture, uh, sketching on the floor to make his workers understand the design better and working with stone and wood himself. Uh, yeah, he worked on the building site with his own hands. Uh, he didn't build a lot and many of, I mean, some of his buildings were destroyed were demolished, but you'll see some uh, remaining uh, uh, buildings, uh, uh, houses. This is one of them. And, and here you see the influence to an extent, the influence of Frank Lloyd Wright. This image in particular seen from this, uh, this, this point uh, uh, reminds me a little bit of, of, uh, of a church uh, he built. Um, uh, it's not a church, it's a house. But it is a very, very skillful, the, the ability to, to negotiate between a metallic uh, structure and the stone uh, walls. Uh, and uh, so it is organic in, 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 a, in a multiple sense. So this lo lodge was probably <clears throat> the first project by Nari and is the best example of his climate sensitive design. This was also the first time someone used the desert masonry 
the masonry in India, which was inspired by Frank Roy Wright's rubble masonry technique. This renders the whole structure in a very simple yet classy palette. The living areas of the lodge are placed in a way that they receive maximum sunlight, while the roof with deep overhangs helps in protecting the house from the dense rainfall that the vicinity receives. Moreover, the plan is laid in the east-west orientation and triangular fashion to gain maximum daylight. Uh, it's a fine building. Uh, it's a fine building by any standards. And it's not, it is modern, but it's not aggressively modern. And it, it has some kind of a subtle clan day towards the past or towards tradition. So it, it, it's, it's, it's skillfully done. The triangle, tri triangular plan in line with the sun path and wind directions, the openings directed towards an unobstructed unobstru view of the nearby fort and reservoir, the use of locally quarried uh, materials and the unconventional look of the building manages to give us the best taste of Nari Gandhi's work. Um, it is different, his work, from, from the work of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, but uh, you see some, some, uh, some breeze coming from the North American. A bungalow, uh, a very uh, interesting structure. It makes me think a little bit of Paolo Soleri in the Arizona desert. It's a small building. It's not a very large building. But, and it is in India. But I think it transcends the localism because I think a very good architecture, even though it is locally, uh, it belongs to a specific place, it, it, uh, its meanings reverberate beyond the, the limits of that place. Now, you might be a little bit uh, reticent uh, about, uh, you know, those uh, ornamental openings in the arch. And, uh, but uh, all in all, it is an interesting building, an original building. And look at this stair here, which uh, becomes narrower towards arriving at the end. Uh, the functionalist might protest. But uh, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting step. A widespread pavilion with arch openings, large pitched roof, and the predominant use of red bricks. This bungalow at the coastal village of Korlai to the south of Ref Danda is probably one of the most celebrated works by Gandhi. The brick wall is adorned with various punctures that not only aid in ventilation, but also add a playfulness to the elevation. The lower levels of the pavilion are supposed to have spaces like service areas, bedrooms, kitchen, and other ancillary spaces, while the upper pavilion areas functions as the living and lounging uh, space. The idea of making the spaces semi-open with two huge arches supporting the pitched roof makes the space grand and acts as the main focal point of the design. Um, we don't see here too many uh, pieces of furniture, but that is okay. We also don't see any furniture in the last work by Ishigami that was just published uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday. The purity of architecture manifests itself perhaps best when there is as little furniture as possible, including in, in cathedrals. Cathedrals at the beginning, as far as I know, in the Gothic times, didn't have churches, uh, didn't have chairs or, or, or benches. Uh, so I imagine the, 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 the majesty, uh, the majestic uh, uh, quality of the cathedral was even more uh, uh, noticeable and felt. The fact that Nari gave immense importance to the construction techniques, design language and materials is very evident from the use of hollow red bricks stained glass, the flying buttresses, custom-made furniture, and the organically planned landscape around the house. It has an element almost of, of science fiction, you know, some kind of a romantic science fiction. Another bungalow, uh, again, the power of the, of, the, of the diagonal, which always adds dynamism to the composition. And uh, it could be easily uh, made legitimate by, uh, by the necessities of a sloping uh, uh, roof. 
um, an interesting building, this one as well. Uh, and uh, interesting is also the fact that he works with local materials, with stones, and uh, his architecture, although maybe at the beginning a little bit influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright, is distinctly his. And I like this rawness. I remember reading that Zaha Hadid wanted to have a raw, a vital, earthy architecture. I don't think she arrived there. Uh, yes, she arrived at other things, but I don't think her architecture can be described as raw and earthy. Maybe some vitality it has, but it's not earthy and it's not raw. This is raw. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, I think this is a quality. Uh, it is said that this masterpiece by Nari Gandhi was constructed without a single set of working drawings or involvement of site engineers. Now, look at this. So he built this building without any working drawing. It's possible. I really think it's possible. So the torture of providing working drawings in the United States, a set of contract documents or working drawings is, is uh, unbearably heavy on the architect. It is actually not made for the construction worker. It is mainly made for the lawyers. If something happens and for the insurance companies, that there are all kinds of notations there that, that show clearly who made the mistake and why. So it's all about mistrust. But here, you know, this building was, was built without working drawings, was just the dialogue between the architect who worked with the construction workers together and they erected this building, you know, with bare hands almost, without drawings and without engineers. Fine. So uh, personally paying, uh, so this project involved a very labor intensive method with, with, Gandhi, with, with Gandhi personally paying attention to every aspect of the design. The structure is composed of stone masonry walls of varying, varying sizes and colors. These masonry walls were integrated with steel straps and trusses, which then supported uh, the sloping roof. Walls of the internal courtyards are embellished with small chips of stones. Most of the stones used in this project were in igneous rocks or indigenous, I, I don't know, uh, from the Western Ghats of Maharashtra. And this implies that Nari Gandhi was very particular about using locally available materials and making the most of it. Strong use of geometry can be seen in the forms of the aperture used in the design like semicircular openings for windows and parallelogram shaped openings for all the doors. The structure through its shades and forms not only bends with nature, but also creates an organic environment within, and this is a pure, purely a product of innovative thought process. Uh, yeah, it, there is also a level of spontaneity. And I think spontaneity is a good thing when it is a good thing, sometimes it could be a bad thing. But, but uh, uh, we have so little spontaneity really in the construction processes of today. You know, we make the contract documents, we make the drawings, we make all the details, and then the building becomes an almost a boring affair where the constructors, the builders have to erect what is shown in the drawing. So there is no surprise, there is no uh, you know, uh, oblique line in the process, so to speak. And there is no uh, really much room for spontaneity. And uh, that's why most buildings look kind of alike. Now, this is an interesting house. Uh, well, this is not the only one that is interesting, but uh, this is interesting also because it has this primitiveness, this archaic quality that uh, that uh, seems to be a uh, characteristic of this uh, Indian architect, although he was an educated architect. But, but I think just like in modern art, some of the greatest modern artists inspire themselves from the archaic, from, uh, you know, uh, archaic cultures, from Africa, from uh, primitivisms, so-called primitivisms, 
Uh, and uh, I think we need that in architecture too, because it is uh, indeed a, a way to uh, arrive at what Zaha Hadid wanted to arrive at and did it. That is rawness and that earthy, earthy quality of the building. And uh, yeah, it is said we are born from the earth and we return to the, uh, to the earth after we die. Well, perhaps in a building that is built from, uh, from uh, you know, like bricks, we feel more at home than, than, than in a building which is uh, built of, uh, of artificial materials. Plus, I think uh, brick, bricks, uh, the bricks uh, age well, uh, organic materials uh, age well, and they are indeed sustainable. So this house by Gandhi is a quaint red brick house that has undone the concept of home. This project is a perfect example of Nari's out of the box thinking. This shows that a house need not be a space confined to walls and ceilings, but can be a collection of organic spaces, open, semi-open and scattered. Again, this too is a climate responsive design with sloping roofs, clerestory windows and deep overhangs. This project was more of a remodeling work and the main highlights include retention of the dense vegetation on the site, usage of locally, locally available red bricks and tree trunks as the main materials of construction and use of local jeru as a paint of walls. I don't know what that is. Revdanda, uh, Revdanda house is more than a house the large fenestrations aided for an unobstructed view uh, for the tree trunks to grow and also served as spaces for art objects like terracotta pots. The house and the design is an artistic mural in itself. Um, I didn't write this text, so um, anyway, it's fine. You know, maybe Neufert would have protested that step you know, that the angle is not correct, that is a little bit too abrupt, uh, it's maybe a little bit too narrow, but uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Neufert, uh, life is not uh, like your uh, manual for architects is. Uh, and uh, strangely, maybe you know, Ernest Neufert studied at the Bauhaus. Not only that, surprise, surprise, Ernest Neufert loved Gaudi, can you believe it? The same architect who tortured countless students with his restrictive uh, so-called rational uh, measurements and so on and calculations loved Gaudi, Antoni Gaudi, incredible. But then opposites attract. It's an interesting building. It's a good building. I, I would have loved to live in this building, but unfortunately I have to settle for much less. Anyway. Uh, and look at this tree, you know, which is hanging on to life uh, in the in the happy vicinity of some bicycles. I love bicycles, and I think the the future belongs to the bicycles and to the village, not to the city and not to the Mercedes. Uh, although once I bought a, a kind of an expensive car too for my daughter, well, uh, it, it it was uh, second hand and it was not expensive at all, but. So, you know, it was said, there is a, this saying that we become what we hate. So it's very possible someone who, uh, you know, is um, intensely against cars, actually deep down uh, loves cars. I don't know, I, I, I shouldn't be so self-derogatory. But I like that tree, although it is dry, it is it's not green, but it's so impressive, you know, almost art artistically impressive, it's dramatic, it's theatrical. Anyway, this is another house, a beach house. Uh, and um, it's, so every project of Nari Gandhi has an interesting story to tell. As far as this beach house at Mad Island is concerned, the story is that he was involved right from the stage of site selection. The design of the house began with the construction of the three huge vaults that formed the prime part of the superstructure, whereas the extra dose of the vaults was filled with the earth and the rood, the rood, I don't know what that is formed, was converted into a huge terrace garden. It's actually a, a cave. Uh, and uh, 
you know, uh, I said it, uh, I think, even yesterday, the, 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 the cave revival, the return to the cave. Uh, here, the distinction between the outside and the inside is uh, diluted. I remember uh, the uh, 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 Milarepa, the great uh, uh, mystic and, and poet, and, and Brincus, uh, Constantin Brincus, uh, he thought that he was some kind of a reincarnation of Milarepa. Well, Milarepa wrote once a little poem. He was living in a cave, and he didn't have anything, any belongings. He didn't have furniture. He didn't have anything except a, a broken... Uh, how is it called, uh, blanket underneath him. So he wrote a little poem where he said, people are afraid of thieves, but I'm not afraid of thieves. I mean, what would the thieves steal from me? The broken blanket, the cave, I have nothing else. I'm not suggesting here to return all of us to the cave, but maybe, you know, our, you know, unending fears. Did you notice how many keys people of, of, of our days have? Even myself, I, I have, uh, you know, uh, an, an, an embarrassing number of keys. We have so many keys because we have so many little belongings that we don't want to lose, uh, you know, and so everything needs a key. What about, uh, uh, you know, a house that doesn't need keys and doesn't need the doesn't have any fears because you know there, there isn't really much to, 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 to lose. I'm not advocating poverty necessarily, although in the United States I used to, to tell so, so some uh, you know, uh, skeptical and even frightened Americans, poverty will save you. Actually, there is a lot of poverty in the United States, a lot, much more than Hollywood uh, is willing to acknowledge and terrible poverty, all poverty is terrible, but, but in the United States is the worst. I mean, you can be very, very, very poor, although you have a TV in every corner of the room and maybe a, a Cadillac in front of the apartment building and still be depressingly poor. Anyway, about this, maybe we'll talk some other time. What is richness? What is poverty? The elliptical openings in the vaults for light, as well as to facilitate hanging of the swing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling this, this text is a translation from a different language and uh, is not the best translation. Sorry. Skylight domes affixed with capped glass chips, broken glass beer bottles. He used even beer bottles, bravo to him. And the vaulted canopy made from thin nylon strings and mother of pearl shells are the features that make this house quite an unusual masterpiece. Uh, you know, um, could we call a cave a masterpiece? Well, this is not a cave. It has some parts that you know, resemble a cave, but it's man-made. But it's, it's, it's interesting uh, and, uh, oh, Please do not tell me that uh, abruptly the presentation ended. <laughs>